Hi, I'm Allison Rapp. Welcome to Back and Forth, where we take a look back at a classic artist and forward to someone that I think might be their contemporary counterpart. Arguably one of the most beloved rock and roll musicians of his time, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers have been consistently pleasing American crowds since 1976, when they released their debut self-titled record. Not for nothing, that self-titled record had both American Girl and Breakdown on it. Imagine having two of your greatest hits on your first self-titled record. Right from the get-go, Tom and his band were out to prove that rock and roll was very much alive, but they tried to keep themselves at an arm's length distance away from the punk scenes that were happening in places like New York or London. Instead, Tom and the band packed up the van in Gainesville, Florida, and headed across the country to Los Angeles, California, the city where record dreams supposedly came true. And that happened for Tom, but not without a few bumps in the road. In fact, Tom Petty actually gained quite a bit of notoriety in the 1980s when he stood up to his record label not just once, but twice. In 1979, when he was under Shelter Records, it got sold to MCA, but Tom was not a fan of being bought and sold like meat by record companies. He sued MCA for a breach in contract and refused to release his next record until the deal could be reached. He also fully funded his next record all by himself and threatened to file for bankruptcy. Eventually, a deal was reached and Tom Petty released Damn the Torpedoes in late 1979, but it set a precedent in the music industry for the way that big-time record labels treated their artists. Several years later, in 1981, Tom Petty did it again, and once again refused to release his next album, Hard Promises, after he learned that MCA had planned to raise the price of his retail CD from $8.98 to $9.98. Tom Petty didn't back down from that dispute either. If Tom is anything, he's a true down-to-earth Southern songwriter, but not in the Leonard Skinner kind of in-your-face sort of way. In fact, Tom Petty actually apologized for using images of the Confederate flag during his tour in the 1980s, and he requested that it never be used in association with his music ever again. Not only that, Tom, rock and roll as he may be, remains one of the few artists who was very thoughtful and articulate about the way that he wrote about women. If you take a listen through some of his albums, you'll notice that he writes about them and their emotions, their struggles, who they want to be. Not so much what they look like or what they're wearing, as was typical with a lot of rock and roll bands at the time. Maybe it was some of the work that he did with female artists like Joni Mitchell or Stevie Nicks, or maybe it was the fact that he had two daughters at home, but regardless, Tom made sure that his music was just as relatable for women as it was for men. As far as the contemporary counterpart goes, I'll have to go with Jason Isbell. Originally from Alabama, Jason embodies many of those same down-home southern rock qualities that Tom Petty did, but maintains a progressive mindset. He played with drive-by truckers for several years and has worked with his own band, The 400 Unit. A few highly recommendable tracks from them are Cover Me Up, Alabama Pines, and Dress Blues. He's also released quite a bit of solo work, taking on a similar path to Tom Petty again. He's devoted a lot of his recent time to working with his wife and fellow musician Amanda Shires, urging the community to support women in country music. For Southern artists like Jason Isbell and Tom Petty, not everything is about the glitz and glamour, but their dedication to their music and not to the record labels or to the expectations of the past is unmatched. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, share across your social media, or comment below, but be nice. Thank you.